You know, 15 years ago, it would have been impossible to imagine a non-Harley, non-V-twin mid-size cruiser being a serious success in North America or the rest of the world. But my, how times have changed. The new Honda Rebel 1100 is the right bike at the right time. Honda did their homework on this one, and this bike is landing at the right moment in order to capture both older, younger, male, female, and first-time riders. So let's look at why this new cruiser will appeal to a very wide customer base and why this spells trouble for Harley, Indian and Triumph. The Rebel 1100 has been in the works for a while. In fact, way back in April, I put out a video on the rumor that Honda was going to build it. So it's not a surprise that it popped up on the Honda website. Let's look at some quick details and speculate about the success of this new bike. This is the biggest of the Rebel family. Who knew the old Rebel 250 would spawn a whole line? The 1100 is styled similarly to the Rebel 300 and 500, which I think is a good thing. I like that it's not trying to be a... another cruiser brand like some Hondas in the past. The look is modern and muscular, no chrome and nothing that doesn't serve a purpose. There is no attempt to harken back to... another company's heritage. Well done. Some previous commenters on my videos don't like the tank design and the way it integrates with the frame, but I'm quite fond of it myself. Generally, you either like the look of this thoroughly modern, blacked out cruiser or you don't. And that's better than having people look at it and go, meh. Strong reactions sell bikes to those whose reactions are positive. The engine is the 1084cc parallel twin from the Africa twin with some tweaks to shift the torque curve down the rev range. The Africa Twin's 101 horsepower drops to 87 in this bike, but peak torque, which is 72 pound-feet, hits at 4,500 RPM. So the new Rebel should feel as fast or faster than the Africa Twin in normal everyday riding. It will certainly keep up with any cruiser out there except the ultra-expensive high-performance ones like the Diavel and the Rocket 3. With a 270-degree crank, the Parallel Twin mimics a V-Twin and should sound like a Ducati as soon as you chuck that horrendous muffler and replace it with a smaller and more stylish slip-on. Having ridden the Africa Twin before, I can confirm that power and sound should be more than adequate to keep most cruiser riders entertained. Honda also gave the bike a 35 degree lean angle for some serious potential in the twisties. That's a lot more than most cruisers have, so the Rebel might surprise some much sportier motorcycles on the tail of the Dragon. The throttle will be ride-by-wire, which makes a slew of electronic aids possible including standard cruise control, traction control, three rider modes, standard sport and rain, plus another customizable mode, and, wait for it, wheelie control. What? On a cruiser? Okay, must be a peppy bike. Also, Honda is offering the bike with its DCT automatic trans as an option, and has already developed accessories so riders can customize it up. I like the mini Batwing fairing with the bags and sissy bar for the touring look. Sort of like a smaller sport glide. Other details? The seat will be 27.5 inches which makes this bike rideable by almost anyone. The tank will hold 13.6 liters giving it decent range. LED lights all around, 18 inch front wheel, a light 487 pound wet weight, 509 with a DCT, and it costs... No Canadian prices are out yet, but in the States it costs $9,300 and $10,000 for the DCT model. Now those are some impressive specs and features, but by far the most impressive is the price. Wow! Here we have a bike with similar performance and more features than the Indian Scout or Triumph Bobber for two to three thousand US dollars less. Another group of bikes that we'll compete with will be the Sportster 1200 line, which it beats in performance features and price. It's definitely making a splash in the middleweight cruiser segment. So if you're a new rider or a rider on a budget or both, you can buy the Rebel for the price of a Harley Iron 883 and have a great looking and performing bike with a solid reputation for reliability and a huge dealer network that you will not outgrow down the road. Now as for new riders, a lot of people argue that a beginner should not start on an 1100 and normally I'd agree. But in this case I'll make an exception. Since this bike has rider modes, new riders can just put it in rain mode while they're learning. It's light enough, coming in 80 pounds lighter than the Sportsters and Scouts, and it's a Honda which is pretty renowned for making user-friendly, easy-to-ride bikes. The lightweight and low seat height are also attractive to riders of smaller stature, including women who may be intimidated by heavier bikes. This bike may also appeal to older riders who don't want to wrestle their 7 and 800 pound Harleys around the bends. I get a lot of comments from older riders who are downsizing their big cruisers for lighter, more sprightly bikes. 
The much lighter weight and the way Honda has kept the engine low is going to make the Rebel easier to handle for aging riders. Another thing that a lot of people experience in their older years is arthritis, and if you have it in your left hand, operating a clutch can be a literal pain. Honda's DCT automatic may make it possible for someone to ride who wouldn't otherwise get to do so. So performance, reliability, price, features, lightweight and ease of operation make this a very attractive option for many potential buyers. But can it compete with the Indian Scout, the Triumph Bobber and the king of the middleweight cruiser class, the Harley Davidson Sportster? The big problem the Rebel has when competing against these brands is heritage. Those are all heritage brands and they have some cachet with riders looking for authentic old school cruisers. But the truth is that both the Scout and Bobber are liquid cooled bikes that look classic but feel modern. And while their performance will probably be comparable to the Rebel 1100, their price tags won't be. You could buy a lot of accessories to nicely outfit your Honda for all the extra cash you'll have to fork out for the Triumph or Indian. And the Honda also undercuts the kings of the class, the Harley Sportster 1200 models by thousands. But the Rebel can't compete with the Sportster's heritage and feel. And this is where Honda got lucky, because it may not have to. Euro 5 may have handled that already. The Sportster is discontinued in Europe and probably doesn't have long left elsewhere in its current air-cooled guise. Harley will have to overhaul it soon and pictures of possible replacements that are floating around have big radiators. So there goes the heritage and unique feel of the Sportster. One of the attractions of the Sportster is its raw feel. It's rougher than the competition, that's why riders buy it. It feels old school because it is old school. But without cooling fins and push rods, the Harley has to compete on its merits. And while I'm sure that the new Sportster will be a fine motorcycle, will it be better than the competition in performance, style or price? It will probably be on par, but no better. So it may lose its special place in the hearts of Harley riders who have turned their backs on non-pushrod liquid-cooled bikes before, no matter what name was on the tank. Without its special status, the new Sportster may struggle to stand out in this crowd and may end up being one of, but not the choice anymore. And this is where the Rebel has an opportunity, because it does stand out, on price and features. It's by far the least expensive and the most loaded with riding modes and other electronics. It has cruise control standard for crying out loud. And the market is ready for it. Parallel twins are slowly replacing V-twins because they're lighter, simpler and more compact with lower centers of mass which improves handling. Harleys and Harley clones are no longer as cool as they used to be and riders, especially younger ones, are giving different bikes a shot. The Honda is coming into a very competitive segment, but considering its technology, price and likely performance, it's coming with a sledgehammer. So do you think that this is the bike that can interest younger riders and cruisers? Would you buy one? Why or why not? Drop your comments below and if you know what it will cost in your country, share that info as well and how it compares to Harleys, Indians and Triumphs. Happy cruising, folks! If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.